By the end of 1981, the Osborne Computer Corporation was a true force in the personal computer industry. They'd recently introduced the first fully-fledged, commercially available, portable business computer, selling tens of thousands of units every month and raking in the millions. But by 1983, the company was laying off hundreds of staff members and filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and in 1985, the company was dead in the ground. What happened? This is LGR Tech Tales, where we'll be taking a look at noteworthy stories of technological inspiration, failure, and everything in between. This inaugural episode covers the wondrous rise and fall of Osborne. Adam Osborne was a dude who was known for making his own way. When he moved to the United States from Thailand in the 1960s, he worked on computer modeling as a chemical engineer at Shell Oil before getting completely fed up and starting his own computer documentation publishing company called Osborne and Associates. This led to them seeing enough success to attract the attention of McGraw-Hill in 1979, who promptly bought them out. Then, using this capital in 1980, Adams started a new company, the Osborne Computer Corporation, with the purpose of selling a portable CPM microcomputer. They didn't waste any time, and on April 3, 1981, the Osborne One was available to buy for the unbelievable price point of $17.95. This was crazy because other CPM computers of the time could easily cost twice as much, and they weren't portable, they were rooted to a desktop. Not only that, but the O1 came with a business software suite that was valued at $1,500, but at no extra cost, making it wildly appealing to business users on the go. Now, weighing in at almost 24 pounds and being about the size of a sewing machine meant that it was more of a luggable than a true portable, but it was lighter than anything similarly specced out there and could fit underneath an airplane seat, so users in 1981 were sold. At least at first, as problems quickly popped up. Not only was it heavy as crap, but the tiny 5-inch screen it had made you want to gouge out your eyeballs, and the floppy drives were single-sided, which meant disks only held a minuscule 90 kilobytes each. Another problem was Adam Osborne himself, or rather, the promises he was making to the public. Barely a year and a half after the O1 went on sale, he was already talking up the next two Osborne computers, which were to address all of the shortcomings of the original. In what would unfairly become known as the Osborne Effect, this premature announcement and promotion of superior products led people to simply stop buying their current model and wait for the improved ones. But that was not all. There were portable CPM machines such as the K-Pro and machines compatible with the increasingly popular IBM PC standard that were outperforming the Osborne One in both sales and usability. Combine this with reported management issues at Osborne and botched releases of subsequent computers, and Osborne Computer Corporation was forced to shut down in 1985. Their assets were hastily sold off, and their landmark computers faded into obscurity, while the better managed companies out there reaped the rewards. Adam Osborne himself faded into the background as well, which is quite sad for a man they tried to compare to Henry Ford. After starting another company that was doomed and writing a book of memoirs detailing the Osborne One affair, he was diagnosed with a brain disorder that caused him frequent strokes before he passed away in March of 2003. And thus ends the story of Osborne and the Osborne Computer Corporation. A man with a great idea, a computer with rapid success, but also a series of fatal errors, bad timing, and mismanagement. Osborne could have been a long-lasting powerhouse, but instead, they're only a footnote in the history of computing. And if you would like to see more episodes by me, I've made a whole lot of them, although this is the first one of the LGR Tech Tales series, I hope to be doing some more in the future if this goes over well. So please let me know what you think about it in the comments, as well as on Twitter and Facebook. You can also support the show on Patreon to see things like this before anyone else and support LGR in general. And as always, thank you very much for watching.